sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek. And hello, I'm your host, Derek W. Truesdale. Welcome to Increase Your Nerdiness, where we kind of talk about all things nerdy. And it, it's sort of a componentized program where I, I try to just kind of focus on one area learn one key concept and then sort of build a foundation from here on out. I actually got a comment not that long ago from a guy who's like, um, am I a nerd if I already know all this stuff? And, uh, well, I'd say you're definitely geek-minded, but uh, some of the stuff I, I've showed so far was has been pretty basic, but I, I do that for a reason because I know I'll get a lot of questions and video comments of people not understanding the the folder structure of a computer or how to, you know, how to have commands or once in a while there's command line stuff. I don't want to confuse people too much. So at least now I'll have the guide where I can point to it and say, ah, go back to that command prompt episode. And, uh, of course they'll never click on it. They'll just be like, but I still have the question. It's like, it's right there. I posted the answer, but I want to know. No, <laughs> uh, I have the feeling that's how it will go. Anyhow, today on the show, we're going to talk about AVI synth syntax in just a moment, but I want to get to one video comment. I'm going to refresh and make sure there's nothing even fresher. This is from Bryant1316, uh, who has a great question. He says, on last week's show, why did you use virtual dub mod? It hasn't been updated since like 2006. I know, that was like forever ago. Meanwhile, Virtual Dub is an ongoing development. Uh, he has no problem with using Notepad for it for script editing. And then he also points out that the cropping and resizer will allow you to do exact pixel cropping and YV12 color space. Oh yeah, which kind of sounds pretty cool. Uh, so that is a, a good point. I tell you, I have a couple reasons that uh, I would I would use virtual dub mod. First off, probably the biggest one is it just it works. It already works on my system, so I kind of leave well enough alone. But the other thing I can do is if I've got a script, I can just like drag and drop, put it right on the virtual dub icon and it loads up. I know it does it on, on the regular virtual dub, not the modded one. But then I can control E to bring up the script editor, make any changes, refresh that. And when I push F7 to save, it brings up an enhanced dialogue thing where I can set all the compression settings and stuff right there. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to it or whatever. Um, but hey, if, if anyone's watching and you ever think, oh, why would you do that that way, Derek? And you have a cool program, make sure you put it in the comments so the other viewers and me might be able to benefit from that. So uh, there you go. Anyway, we'd better move on to the programming. Today we're we're going to talk about AVI synth syntax and what it means to you. Uh, we're going to be learning how to read the documentation of, an, of a filter and also how to install new plugins. All of this stuff is just um, will definitely come in handy. Now AVI Sith might seem a little creepy at first and like, why would I want to learn this? It'll seem like a lot of steps, but once you get used to this stuff, it becomes actually very intuitive and you're no longer at the mercy of whatever program you're using. For example, I, I once read an article of this animation guy who, for whatever reason, for a whole host of reasons, he decided that the ideal frame rate for animation should be like 14.9 frames a second or some weird thing. And he's like, but when am I ever going to find a program that handles that? Well, with AVI Synth, you have one. You can pretty much put whatever frame rate you want. So you don't have to be at the mercy of the settings. Anyhow, the first thing we're going to talk about is internal versus external filters. Now, there are many internal filters that, just like they sound, are built into AVI Synth. And so I have a script here that says color bars. That's an internal function. And also convert to YV12, which kind of helps for something coming up later in this guide. So I'm going to close that out. We're going to drag that script right into our virtual dub program. And you'll see that there's a nice set of color bars. 
that's sort of a pre-programmed thing. However, there are some commands that uh, are not built in, like this one that we're going to be using a little bit later in the guide, and I'll show you the difference then. Uh, T decimate is a uh, function, I believe is the proper term. We're going to save that. We're going to drag it in here, and now it's going to say, whoa, hold on. There's no function named T decimate. I've never heard of this odd thing. Uh, and the reason is that is an external filter, so we got to bring the DLL here. Now, what we're looking at here is our AVI synth plugins directory, which is there's going to be some path depending on your version of Windows, and then AVI synth 2.5 and plugins. You can usually get to it from the start menu if you go to start programs, AVI synth, uh, whatever version, and then and then it'll have a thing for plugins folder, which will bring you here. Now, that command that I just tried that didn't work is actually, uh, it, it depends on this DLL here. That's TV, T -I -V -T -C DLL. Now, since I know that, and you would know that if you looked up a command, you're like, uh, how do I get that? And then it, you'd eventually find the DLL that uh, allows you to do that. Now, the DLL doesn't always have to have the same name as the functions built into it because it can have multiple functions. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, why, why have a whole bunch of different DL DLLs if you can put it all in the same thing? Anyhow, I'm going to take this and drag it in. And you'll see that it, it works now. It actually knows what that command is. So that's kind of the difference between internal and external functions. Now, I'm going to go back to this folder we had last time of, of our, our video that we were converting. We have, and by the way, this is a public domain film, YouTube. Uh, they actually, they're like, hey, uh, you need more information. Don't just say that you... You use this for academic discussion. We need to know you have the rights. So this is from a film from 1936 called The Big Show, which you can find on a list of public domain films in the U.S. on Wikipedia. So uh, I've made a good faith effort to verify that this actually is a public domain film. Also, we're using it for the purpose of academic discussion. So, you know, all should be good there. Anyhow, we're going to drag this into here. And uh, this is the file we were uh, working with last week. Now, let me sh show you some of the other magic here on, uh, on, on AVI Synth. Because uh, we're going to be talking about some syntax today. So we're going to bring up our script editor here. And I'm going to show you a trick. First off, uh, spaces and line breaks. Now, we've got my script here, my video here. I could take this and just add a whole bunch of spaces. I'm going to refresh it, and you see that it's the same movie. Nothing's changed. So the spacing doesn't doesn't really matter, unless it's in something in quotes here, which we'll discuss in a moment. The other thing is, if you wanted to clean this thing up, and it, it, you know, if a line was getting too long, you could add a backslash here, which says, uh, look on the next line. And then I'm going to put this here. And what that does is it tells AVI Synth, uh, consider this line here, line 2, and line 3. Consider that the same line of code. We're going to push F5. You see there's no difference. All right, so that's one thing you can do. Uh, like I said, a script has commands in or order. You know, line 1, line 2, line 3, and so on and so forth. Now, the other thing we could do is we could take this command I'm gonna push backspace we're gonna put it back here and if we put a dot in between it's it's the same thing as going to the next line and doing that I believe it is in this case <laughs> all right I guess I lied to you here uh, let's see if we can get back to the original here um, sorry about that but see th with audio dub it is a little different because of the way it works but if we were to like crop you know, do some cropping and then a resize like this. Uh, there'd be no difference between having those two different lines and then a dot in between like that. Uh, so that's another little trick there. Now, another thing, and I'm, I'm going to have to bring up some documentation here of an AVI synth filter. Uh, let me think of a good one. This one, image source. You're going to see a couple weird things. First, you'll see int, okay? 
you'll see floats, and you'll see you'll see bools and strings too. All all kinds of craziness here, and all that means is uh, well, the first one, an integer is a number like one, or two, or three. You guys know that. Uh, a float is a floating point number. So like if I was to say two point seven. Uh, yeah, 2.718, blah, blah, blah. Some kind of floating point number. It, it gives you some decimals of accuracy. Uh, what's the other one? The bool is a Boolean operator, for example, if something was true or if something was false. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just load up an image. I'm going to say image source. That's one of the AVI synth internal filters, and we're going to say nerd. Dot PNG. Uh, there you go. Now notice we put that in quotes because it expects a string for the source of whatever image it is. Uh, I was telling you how you can put a line break uh, here, or rather you put a backslash indicating that whatever's on the next line is con considered up here. Now, you can't do that in the middle of, of, of quotes, I don't believe. I mean, that would probably wreck it. It's uh, So when it's expecting a string there, don't mess with that. Uh, anyhow, let's take a look at how this looks. We're going to drag this thing right in. And you'll see that it's just a PNG file that's loaded up here. And I'm going to get some file information. You'll see that it's an RGB24 which means no transparency. All right, so let's go back to the documentation here and notice that we have a string for pixel type. Okay, and that's another thing. Again, it, it's got to be in quotes. So we're going to enter a string here. We're going to put a comma because there could be different... Um, sort of switches for the commands. It's like in, in MS-DOS when you enter a switch. That's kind of what we're doing here. So we're separating this string for the file name and our pixel type. We're going to define that as pixel underscore type equals. We have our quotes, and we're going to say RGB32. All right. So we're going to save this and drag it in and see what changed. We're going to say file information, and now you'll see that it says uncompressed RGB32. So it could have some transparency. So that's what you do. So um, if it, it for a lot of these variables built into the filters, it's expecting um, an integer, a floating point variable, or um, strings, or Boolean things, or something like that. So... I don't think this would be an operator for this particular fun function, but for some of them, we'd say interlaced equals true or something. like. I mean, sometimes you do that in, in a filter if you're resizing or, or converting color spaces. It's come up. So that's kind of now, at least if you look in the documentation, you'll have some idea of how this works. Now, you'll notice here that I just said... I defined what I'm defining, or rather I said pixel type, and then I assigned it this string of RGB32. Well, there are some commands, like uh, like levels, for example, and I'm going to look that up in the documentation. We're going to say AVI synth levels, there we go. I was looking at it earlier, as you can see, and it expects the the actual clip we're working on first. Don't worry about that, because, I mean, whatever clip you have loaded up is already your 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 clip. This is just sort of inside the mind of AVI synth, how it thinks. And then we have an integer for input low, a float for gamma, uh, integer for input high, and then output low and output high, and also another bool for the coring, if you're using multiple cores or whatever. So since it's expecting those values, I don't have to say input low equals and then assign it something it's expecting that is the first one so I say uh, yeah the normal would be zero uh, gamma of one 
255 and then another zero and another 255 and if we load that up yes it should be working fine it knows what to expect so that's how you read the documentation you kind of look and find out what the default stuff is what it expects and then as necessary you define uh, something there all right, so remember, always have your open and close parentheses. If there's a string, you put it in quotes. Uh, if there's a floating point thing, floating point variable, remember, it can be a decimal, like 0 0.5, okay? And that'll change it a little bit, or else it'll just be an integer. So always give AVISynth what it expects. So there you go, another fun thing accomplished with AVISynth. All right, well, I'm Derek W. Truesdale. Remember, you can uh, get a list of all the other podcasts from, or the other episodes, rather, from the Increase Your Nerdiness podcast. Find it at DerekForPresident.com. Uh, so you can find my YouTube channel, a blog. It kind of puts all my stuff together so it's not one giant mess floating around the Internet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time on Increase Your Nerdiness. Sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek.